Okay, so our last section of this chapter is about Lewis acids and bases. And so we had defined that earlier as a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. That appears initially to be really, really different from like the Bronsted Lowry definition, but as it turns out, everything that we define as an Arrhenius acid or a Bronsted Lowry acid is also included in the Lewis acid definition. A lot of things that are not included as acids in the Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry models are included as Lewis acids. So in order of inclusiveness, we, um, we increase from each chronological definition. So Arrhenius is the least inclusive, Bronsted Lowry is the next most inclusive, and Lewis is the most inclusive. So it includes all of the acids, really that anything that changes litmus paper to red, anything that reacts with bases to neutralize and, and make a salt, um, all those characteristics we looked at in the very first slide of chapter 16, Lewis acids include all of those things. Even the ones who don't necessarily have hydrogens or aren't in water. So there are actually systems that can be acidic but not have any water present whatsoever. Um, Lewis bases have to have electrons to donate. So NH3 ammonia is a really good example of that, pH3 as well. So when I said group 15 has lone pairs, so they tend to be bases, that's because you have NH. And if you add up all your electrons, you'll find you have a lone pair there. So ammonia is a base really because it has those electrons there to play with, which means if water is coming along, it can, it can donate it it donates these hydrogen uh, these electrons to the hydrogen and that allows this bond to break so we're weakening the OH bond if we're we're kind of giving it more electrons to play with okay so water and CO2 is an excellent example. So CO2 is called, is classified as an acidic anhydride, which is a fancy way of saying it's something that when we put it in water, it makes it acidic, but there's no water, there's no hydrogen actually in the compound, right? CO2 has no hydrogen in the compound. The reason that it's an acidic anhydride is some of those reactions that we looked at before. When you take CO2 aqueous, so the gas dissolves in the water first, and then you make it, react with water, you're going to get that series of compounds we talked about um, when we were talking about ocean chemistry and blood chemistry, right? And so it's called an acidic anhydride because it doesn't have hydrogen in it, but it makes things acidic because by reacting with to make HCO3, we're taking one of the oxygens and one of the hydrogens to make HCO3. We're also going to be making hydrogen ion. So there wasn't any hydrogen in CO2 to begin with, yet whenever we get it in water, it turns, it turns the solution more acidic. So that's what acidic anhydride means. It's also called a Lewis acid, right? Okay. So that's because it, it has electrons on the oxygen that go and attack the hydrogen first on the water. And that, that leaves availability open um, for another oxygen from another water molecule to come on and produce hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, if you remember that name. Okay. All right. So, um, also, by the way, when you think about like iron or any of those metals we looked at, they are also acidic anhydrides or Lewis acids because they have a positive charge. And you know that, of course, water has these two negative things. So in terms of the mechanism, the way that this reaction happens, these electrons are going to donate to the iron. So you'll have like an intermediate where the oxygen in the water is a kind of, it's not a full bond, but it's attached, right? So it's an intermediate, it's not stable. And then what's going to happen is one of those hydrogens has to be kicked out because oxygen really doesn't have the ability to bond as a tetrahedral molecule. And so we end up with the FeOH. And by the way, this still has 
a charge, this one would still be three plus. Um, but now it'll be two plus because we have kicked out a hydrogen. Okay, so your charges still add up at the end. So all those metals are Lewis acids as well. And they work because they want electrons pretty bad and water is pretty willing to give it. Okay, so um, this is the summary of the mathematical relationships in the last half of the chapter. It's a handy reference for when you're doing your homework and but as the time goes on throughout the semester these are things that you are probably going to know off the top of your head hopefully before your final so keep practicing problems until you remember these pretty well